the presentation I want to make today is concerning how to perhaps use TED Talks in, as a course enhancement in what you're teaching. How many are aware of what TED means and what it is? All right, we have some in the room that do. All right, um, TED is a very interesting presentation model and a lot more. Right now, what you need to do is to go into the center of your table and pick out a handout, because you'll need one of those. In the first part of your handout, you'll notice that it has some blanks in it, strategic blanks that right now one is already filled out. So what we call this technique in the beginning is called close notes, and that is to help the audience, whoever your audience is, to go along with you as you present your material. So the very first um, blank should now say 1984. So Ted was born in 1984. It was at a conference, and at that conference, the people who um, created it wanted to bring together people in three fields, technology, entertainment, and design. So at that first conference, it was just those people coming together to talk about what they knew about and all the, the um, cutting edge kinds of things that they were uh, finding out about all of it. So noted speakers from those fields came to promote their ideas. Today, TED Talks covers almost all topics from science to business to Ready? Social issues. Now the social issues are also global issues, so it runs the gamut. And all of these TED Talks have been now translated into over 100 languages. Coming from 1984 to today, <coughs> TED has traveled a little bit of a road. And what you don't have in front of you is the TED time, timeline. Okay, so very quickly, I just want to go through what the timeline is for TED. So in 1984, that was the first conference. I love this part. The cutting edge in 1984 for technology was compact disks. Remember those, right? Where it used to be the floppy disk that you shouldn't <coughs> fold, and you, right? Then it became the compact disk. Does anybody have any of those anymore? Yeah. Really? Do you use them? <laughs> Do you have a machine that actually plays them? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even have one anymore, right? Then the next cutting edge thing that they were presenting there was three uh, e-books. The concept of taking a book and putting it into electronic form to transmit it. That was new in 1984. And finally, the 3D graphics for the entertainment industry. They were looking at trying to um, develop a better, more realistic model of what they were doing. And Unfortunately, in 1984, uh, maybe it has something to do with the book, 1984, but I don't know. Um, it didn't make any money, so the TED organization kind of closed down for a while, and they tried it again in 1990. This time, they invited more people to come, but it was still just them talking to each other. In 2001, TED was acquired by a man by the name of Chris Anderson, an entrepreneur, and a person that had a lot to offer. Um, and he also started a nonprofit called, I love this, Sapling Foundation. So think about how perfect that name is for an organization that wants to spread knowledge and excitement and innovation to the world. It grows, right? From 2001 to 2006, Three major additions were made. TED Global, to allow people to attend from around the world at a much reduced rate. The TED Prize, this is amazing. It grants its winners one wish to change the world. They also happen to give them a million dollars to do that. <laughs> I think that's great. And finally, TED Talks was created during that period of time. And so it was released as a video and audio podcast in which um, TED Talks is released online for free. 
for free. In 2008, TED Active occurred. And what that means is that wherever they were doing the TED Talks conference, they were simulcasting it around the world. In 2009, TED Fellows was developed so that then they could bring those folks from around the world with all of their cutting edge ideas and innovations to a location to have those ideas flushed out and developed even further. TEDx is a creation around the country at different locations, and I think, George, you attended a TEDx here on the campus of USF, where local communities can come together and create their own TED formatted conference. So we may hear a little bit more about that from George later. The Open Translation Project was how these TED Talks have been translated into over 100 languages. It's because people from around the world <coughs> wanted that information but didn't speak English. So then that's the way that happened. And in 2012, TED not only um, celebrated its 30th anniversary of being in existence, it started something called TED Ed. And TED Ed is for the K-12 teachers from, again, all over the world. To have conversations, to be able to create videos of classrooms, to have children connect, and have the best practices for teachers around the world K-12. And finally, they partnered with the public radio. And then now it's called the TED Radio Hour. And that may be something you would know about, George. All right, so one of the formats for TED, and actually there are many books that have been written about TED, how to deliver a TED talk. Talk like TED. <laughs> And you know it's an acronym, so that's kind of a funny way to say that. TED Talks Storytelling, how to tell stories of your life. All right, so there are many, many ideas about um, the TED format, but one of the major points about what TED tells every person who wants to do a TED Talk is don't go longer than 18 minutes. 18 minutes, why not 15? Why not 20, why, why 18, right? Well, what they found out through brain research is that the, the brain is an energy hog. It, it takes up so much glucose, and you can speak to that about how the brain functions, right? And after a while, in listening, your brain kind of goes somewhere else. I mean, for me, it's like grocery list. Let me think, what do I need to get? And it usually happens that full focus capability of understanding and watching and paying attention kind of lags right around the 18 minute mark. So for TED, when anyone does a TED presentation, the format is 18 minutes. So, and as, the, um, as we all age, I think that is also a, um, something that we all experience. Today, we want to share with you a TED talk presented by this beautiful woman by the name of Amy Mullins. Amy is a phenomenal person in her own right. As you can see, she's exquisitely gorgeous, so it's fun to watch her, right? But what you don't know about her, perhaps, is that these are prosthetic legs. She was born without the shin bone in her lower leg. So at a year old, her bottom legs were amputated, and so she has had to use a prosthetic device all of those years. She's quite accomplished. She graduated from Georgetown University. She ran track and field, <laughs> made history in terms of how well she could do that. She was also part of the um, US Olympic, Paralympics team that met in Atlanta. And she placed in the track and field event in both high jumping as well as sprinting. She did that with the aid of something called the cheetah legs. And maybe you know that term, and maybe you've seen that. She was the first person on the planet to have those designed, and she used them in her track and field event. She has since gone on to become a model, an actress, an author. She has had her TED Talks translated in 42 languages. 
And it was because of her that Chris Anderson was so impressed and so energized and inspired by her, that's what got him to buy the rights to do TED back in 2001. She's really quite an amazing person. You have um, on your sheet, on the, at the bottom of the sheet, as well as on the back, I have this information, which is more of her biography. If, after you watch her TED talk, you may want to research a little bit more about her, there's a lot more to tell. And this is a picture of her as the athlete with her cheetah legs. Okay, so we're going to watch Amy's TED talk, but as you watch this presentation, I want you to think about four questions. And I have, again, the four questions on your sheet. So the first question. What question or questions does she pose to the audience? That's another technique that Ted uses. And in fact, if you would just go and Google Ted questions, you'll have a list from Google that will go on for 65 pages. <laughs> What? <laughs> I think they cover most questions that you ever come up with. At least most questions for kindergarten kids. The second question. What are her most effective presentation methods? Okay, wow, that was fast. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, I learned that if I keep my finger down on that button, it just goes right there. Wow, all right, so you can read what the next questions are. All right, so how do her visuals enhance her presentation? And finally, what makes her presentation stand out? And not to use a pun, stand out. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that, all right. Um, so now I need Jean to help me do the presentation with Amy Mullins. The PowerPoint. Okay, um, TED Talk, as I said before, the, the typical format is 18 minutes. That was nine. So if you think about using a TED Talk in your presentation, which is what we're um, suggesting for today's Lunch and Learn, then a lot of the TED Talks are only nine minutes long. Some of them are five, some are 12. 18 is the maximum for the reason that was mentioned earlier, okay? So for right now, for the next 10 minutes, what we'd like you to do is to think about the four questions that we pose and talk among your table about the experience you just had in watching a TED Talk. Think about how she presented, what her major point was, what her question was, and how did she spend those nine minutes making that point, okay? And so we will reconvene in 10 minutes. In the Amy Mullins TED Talk, I thought she was pretty powerful, but a lot of it had to do with her particular story, right? Who she was, where she came from, how she got started in life, which I think most people would think that would be a pretty tough life to live. And she turned that around and became a fantastic person and an inspiration to so many. I used to do workshops for Pinellas County Schools for teachers of general education when my students, my special ed kids, were going to be mainstreamed into their classes. Had I done that TED Talk, I think that would have given more opportunity for general education teachers to understand that you are differently abled, not disabled. So that was really one of her major points, I think. She talked about being super able versus disabled. She talked about collective humanity. That was powerful to me. That could be great in a poetry class. That could be great in a lot of your courses. Be the architect of your own identity. And I thought about that in how she presented it, 
But then I also thought about it as me transitioning from a working person into now who am I as a retired person. I've had to re-identify, make my person into who I want to become now in this next stage of life. A lot of your, your, of course, the people who attend your classes are doing the same thing. Everyone has something rare and powerful to offer our society. Everyone is special. And I spent my entire career trying to allow my students to understand how special they were and how much they had to offer society. And finally, the power of self-talk. It's how you, you talk to yourself and your belief about who you are that makes you into who you want to become, right? So those are some of the points that were presented, I think, from Amy's um, talk and TED Talk. Um, and for those of us who are uh, either in the middle of a course or getting prepared to teach a course, and let's say we wanted to include a part of a TED Talk or all the TED Talk in, in the courses that we're preparing, mm -hmm. where do we go for that and how do we get that? <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Yes. All right, so I'll press that little slide and how do we find a TED Talk to you? Goodbye. <laughs> All right. As with most things in technology, you Google. <laughs> so you can Google your course topic and add the word TED Talks behind it. And what will come up magically is a series of 10 top 10 talks. Okay, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, anyway, so it will show you possibilities of TED Talks based on your topic, okay? You can Google a topic within your course, not just your course. So if you have, a, have information that you wanna give or explain as part of your course, just take that part and Google it with TED Talks behind it. Or you could pose a question that you have in your course, and again, add TED Talks behind it, and it will show you everything that's available. Or simply go to tedtalks.com, and you'll see the entire website and what's available. George, would you like to talk about the TEDx? The first thing that occurs to me is the there isn't an ALI in the country, or another lifelong learning institution in the country, that isn't facing the same challenge about upping our technical game. And not just informing uh, and teaching, but also captivating and entertaining and motivating the people who we deal with, regardless of what age group we're in. TED is an easy, certainly inexpensive, way for us to add that pedagogical pizzazz uh, to our, our, our uh, lesson plans. So we're all teaching very, very different courses. But today it was about, can we take segments of TED Talks? Can we use a whole TED Talk? Or is that too much in one of our classes? But it wasn't just the talk itself. So in uh, our group here, we were talking about why was she effective? What was effective about what, did, what she did? And what were some of the things? Why was she effective? She was a very poised, comfortable speaker. So you could see that easily, that she understood herself, she understood her message, she knew exactly what it was she wanted to do. So mm -hmm. she carried the stimulation within that nine minutes, which I thought was really very, very effective. Uh, her stories. You know, we like the personal stories. And, and again, it doesn't suit every class, but you can think about these things. Mm -hmm. Could I use stories? Could I use what kind of visuals? Um, All right. What I wanted to do now is get to the very last slide. Come on, guys. One more time. <coughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs>